welcome to the Breast Og Vlog. Ayo! Oh, all right, so we are heading to surgery today, right now, right this moment. Um, it is 10.14, I'm to be there at 10.30. Um, and it's like luckily like 10-15 minutes away from the house, so so nice. Um, and the place that we're going has like the operating room in their offices, so that's also very nice. Um, but yeah, um, I started getting nervous at 7 a.m. this morning basically. So I wasn't nervous before that. Now I did, if you've been following, I did have surgery last year. Um, breast surgery as well. I had a lump removed, benign lump, thank goodness. Um, but now I'm getting bigger lumps put in this year. So it was almost exactly a month away, um, or a month ago, or a year ago, my, my bad, a year ago that I got those, that removed. Now we're uh, going back in for uh, an upgrade. Uh, so let's go. I'm excited and I'm nervous, um, anxious, and um, I'm just ready for them to put that like, put that stuff in that makes me feel good and go to sleep because then I wake up and I have boobs so <laughs> let's go thank you Andrew for driving me and he's gonna be taking care of me today uh-huh okay. yeah uh, what were you saying no no we're gonna have some fun today watching movies <laughs> Alright. Taking drugs. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm gonna be taking drugs. Um, my arm's actually getting tired, so I don't know how I'm gonna do it when <laughs> I can't hold this very well. Um, but I had to shower last night and this morning with HIPAA Cleanse, um, which is like the antibacterial soap, and then wear a button down shirt. Oh, and it's October, so if you're like watching this some other time, I'm wearing my Halloween jammies. <laughs> so that's nice. Oh gosh, this is fun. Alright, so next time I see you guys, it'll be after the surgery. I'll have some new additions to the family. We're here! Hello! Hello. Who are you here to pick up, Mr. Andrew? Um, I'm picking up this lady named Bonnie. Bonnie, okay. That, I think we have the here? wrong car. Oh, uh, okay, wrong car. <laughs> Who are you picking up? Amanda. Okay, just check yeah. it Big, strong, straight legs. Take a deep breath. Feel okay? Yeah. Have a seat. There you go. <laughs> do you have anything to say? I'm How do you feel? <laughs> you feel out of it? Okay. Was it like faster than you thought it was? Like. I just fell I mean, it's pretty quick. <laughs> you fell asleep. Okay. Straight away. All right. So, um, everything you guys. It is now. What is going on, guys? I'm fresh out of surgery. I'm tired. I'm on drugs. I got boobs now. This is fun. Do you see them? It hurts a pain level of two out of ten. <laughs> Two out of ten. Well, you're also on some medication. Two out of ten. Let's keep it that way, y'all. It's gonna be fun to edit. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> we talked about how Andrew needs to propose to me. No, you didn't. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. No, she didn't. Yes. They were all giving me hints on how to get it to happen. <laughs> So don't worry. I make it very clear every single day. <laughs> oh, green light. Green light, all right, we're gonna stop recording. All right, Snapchat family. I'm home, out of surgery, on drugs. Huh, I passed out. I passed out when they gave me the mm -hmm. IV. And just trying to drug me over here. Shake. All right, what is going on, guys? It is like 7.30, I think. Um, mm -hmm. 
And I got out of surgery. You picked me up around two, right? Uh, kind of close to that. Yeah, pretty much when we drove off the lot, it was about two. So it's been like five hours since I got home. Mm -hmm. Um, the pain was minimal at first. I think I mentioned. Did I mention it was like a two? You said it was around when a two. I got in the car. Escalating and escalating and. Um, I just took a pain medicine though. I was I could have taken it like two hours ago, but it's hard to eat. I was getting nauseous. Um, I don't know if that had to do with fainting earlier, because I felt nauseous after that. But I just had basically banana, and then I just took my pain medicine, so maybe it'll go away. <sighs> and I've just been sleeping, literally. And the doctor called, and I just said I've been sleeping. And Andy's taking care of me. So is Nugget. Mostly sleeping she is, but, you know, mm -hmm. she's, she's doing her snuggles. Good. She knows not to jump. All right, that's all. It's all for now. All right, hi, it is the day after surgery, 11 a.m. So, kind of almost, almost 24 hours. Um... <sighs> I slept a lot yesterday, but I also threw up, so I took my muscle relaxer when I got home, then pain meds like five and a half hours later, then I tried to take another muscle relaxer, but I threw that up, um, so I just took one this morning, last night was rough, I can't do much by myself, and Andrew's helping me, basically, and Nugget. <laughs> She's just doing a lot of sleeping on you. So, and the pain, well, I'm not really taking my pain meds, so I say I can't eat that much. I have, like, no appetite, so I have to eat to take my pain meds. Where would you rate your pain right now? When I'm just sitting here, it's not that bad, but when I try to move around, it's, like, eight, nine. Hmm. Okay. But it's more like, uh, pain, and then I'm like, crap, I don't want to hurt anything, you know? Yeah. We're like, yeah. So, I'm like limiting my actions. Alright. Alright, what is going on guys? So, it is two days after surgery. It is Wednesday. I had surgery on Monday. It's like 10.30 a.m., have not showered so I'm so sorry about my appearance and also so sorry about the angle if it's off because you're just sitting on the couch right now. Andrew was going to go to work yesterday. He left and then ended up calling me and was like I talked to like my manager and stuff like this like my coworkers, and they say like I can just come home it's totally fine. So he came home. Um, he went to the grocery store first to buy a few things. I was planning on showering yesterday, but I just like was not feeling up to it. So he bought like unscented liquid soap because I need to shower with that. Um, and then he bought Gatorade because my appetite was like nothing. I can't remember what I told y'all yesterday because I meant to update you guys again, but I did not. Um, but my appetite was like nothing yesterday. So um, he bought Gatorade and saltines and like just like applesauce and a few things like that. Applesauce sounds good. I might have some applesauce. Um, so today, my well, last night, my appetite went up, but I can't take pain meds without the appetite, right, without eating. So I was not taking any pain meds. I actually only took one pain med, and now I'm just moved down to Tylenol because I went so long without them. I was like, I might as well just, like, do Tylenol, right? Because um, pain meds, like, I just don't like taking, like, narcotics. And then also, they cause, like, constipation. I've watched so many videos, and people don't poop for, like, nine days after surgery. <laughs> well, guess what, guys? I pooped the day after surgery, so uh, that's cool. <laughs> um, so, sorry for the TMI, but super cool there. Um, and, yeah, so I feel a lot better today. I can, I'm much more mobile. Andrew's at work. And... When I walk around a lot, I get kind of like, like when I walk upstairs, I'm like out of breath. Talking a lot, I get kind of out of breath, um, but it's not too bad. Definitely feel super swollen, like they've gotten more swollen, like way more swollen um, over the past few days. But it'll ease up, and we'll see what they look like in the end, so 
Um, just wanted to update you guys day three. I'll probably update you guys later too. All right, what is going on guys? So I'm three days post-op today. It is Thursday. I had surgery on Monday, so I guess that's three days, right? Um, so I feel so good today. Um, I'm so happy. I feel like recovery has been it was really hard in the moment. Like I was like, damn, this is so much harder than I thought. Like I thought it was gonna be hard. Then I watched some videos and it was like, some people had it really easy. Some people had it really hard. And I was like, hopefully I'll have it easy. And then I was like, damn, this is more pain than I'm expecting. But to be fair, I like was not taking my pain meds really like on schedule at all. Um, Cause I had no appetite. So I couldn't take the narcotics. Then by the time I like ate a full meal, I was like, I'm just gonna do Tylenol, whatever. So I mean, probably taking my pain meds would have made it like less painful. Um, I don't think I have a pain, high pain tolerance at all. So um, I felt like it was pretty easy so far. I mean, I am still three days. So like it could, I, I don't think it's gonna get worse, but like, you know, it could still get worse. Um, I showered yesterday. Andrew had to help me. So that's one thing like make sure you have somebody that you're comfortable like seeing you naked um, Because you are gonna need help showering like there's no way I would have been able to like wash my hair very well um, So he helped me and like obviously like washing all sorts of my body and like a slippery shower that could be kind of dangerous, too um, So yeah, so I recommend having somebody help you um, so get somebody that you're comfortable around um, and then so I showered, that made me feel really good. Um, I actually had, if you've been following me, I had like a, a lump removed, a benign lump removed last year from my right breast. So I bought these surgery bras last year and um, they, they fit me, they're a small and they still fit me. I mean, they didn't fit me last year, so it makes sense now they fit me. Um, so, and I'm still very swollen. I was especially swollen yesterday. I feel like I'm probably the same amount of swollenness, but I'm getting used to it so it doesn't feel as swollen. But when I like feel, I'm like, oh yeah, it's still there. But my body's getting more used to like them being there, I guess, or like the swelling being there. So yeah, my appetite yesterday was weird. Like I ate, I ate two servings of like lunch, like smaller servings. I just don't want to heat it all up and then not eat it and then throw it all away. Um, so I ate some lunch and then I ate I ate breakfast too, but by dinner, like, I couldn't really get my food down, so I had half my, like, smoothie that I usually do. I wanted to drink it all, but I couldn't. Um, I was so full. It's so weird. Um, but the smoothies I make are pretty, like, calorie-dense. Like, they're high in protein um, with the egg whites, and then we also do protein powder just for, like, extra. I mean, I did yesterday because I really needed more protein. Um, but, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good today. I even had a cup of coffee today. Um, the other days, I really just wanted to, like, sleep if I could, so I, like, did not want to drink coffee. But, yeah, I, like, do feel much better back to my normal self. In the mornings, I'm still pretty, like, I'm... I, I am kind of tired still, which is weird. I don't know what's making me tired. I took a muscle relaxer last night, but that was like maybe like 10, 11 p.m. last night. It's 3 p.m. currently right now, Thursday. Um, I'm working. You can see my laptop's up. I tried to do some yesterday, but I, I could not sit there for more than like 5, 10 minutes. Today, I've been sitting there all day. I only sat on the couch to eat my breakfast. Um, and Nugget sat next to me. She's getting really good at not like trying to eat my food on the couch, which is really amazing. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to do an update. Um, gonna shower again tonight. I still have some like marker marks from the markings. Um, but I can't wait till like I can like do everything on my own again. Like we have so many clothes that need to be folded and Andrew like works too much. And then when he's not working, he's taking care of me. So um, I just didn't get around to folding them before surgery because we just had like so much we were doing that hopefully I can do that within the next few days. I feel like I could probably do some of it, but I don't want to strain myself too much. So I'm going to hold it off until maybe like the weekend or Monday, um, see how I feel, talk to them about like doing stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to update you guys and I will continue to do so, um, especially if there's like major changes or anything, but... So far, so good, guys. All right, what is going on, guys? Ooh, ouch. <laughs> I just um, tried to pull myself up or push myself up with my arm um, on accident. Oops, kind of hurt, a little tight there. Um, I am five days post-op. I missed yesterday because, honestly, this is probably going to be like, I don't know, this might be the last day I say anything because for like a while because there's really not much like going on. I feel like since... Thursday, which is three days post-op, yeah, I've been pretty good, like, 
I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting better every single day, like my range of motion's going up. Today I folded some clothes, but I did have to stop because I started getting like a little like soreness, tightness here. Um, and I just don't want to push anything, obviously. So every single day I'm doing a little more, like I can fill up my water now. I'm not using my gallon water bottle because that's way too heavy. Don't know when I can use that again. Um, I looked it up. I'm pretty sure a gallon is like eight pounds. Like that is like pretty heavy for like, you know, them saying like don't lift anything more than a paperback book. Um, so I just have my like 24 ounces. Um, but yeah, I feel pretty good. I wanted to touch on a few like logistical things here because I did not go over it yet. So I had gone in. Okay, so I went into this process thinking like, okay, I'm going to do ideal implants because I don't know. I just heard somebody got them and like they were like, they're so good. This and that. Basically, they're like have like the gel outside because I think they always have to have like the gel outside. I don't really know. Maybe not. Um, but they have the gel outside and then the silica or the um, saline on the inside. But when I went in there or then I started doing more research um, after I made my appointment and I learned that the new gel, gel um, silicone implants are like very cohesive. So they're like kind of like gummy bears. So when you think of like a gummy bear, if it did like break open and it's squeezed, you know, like your muscle squeezes it or whatever. Um, it's just going to basically like bounce back in. Like it's not going to separate out like they have previously. And I guess when it did like separate out, it would like kind of go wherever. Um, and then it would, yeah, like you don't want like random like silicone inside your body like floating anywhere. I don't really know. I never really researched it too much. But that's one thing obviously that did hold me back previously from even like considering implants. I was like, they're dangerous, like whatever. Um, but yeah, they're like, it, they've come a long way. So when you talk to like the older generations of people who like, they might've known somebody who had like the old style of implants. And like, if that's all they know, they're probably going to be like, no, it's dangerous, blah, blah, blah. Cause they don't know how far they've come. Like when's the last time you did research on this? Right. Um, so yeah, so that's just something to note. Um, they have definitely come a long way. And I think that those are like even newer within like the past few years. Um, not really sure, but yes, yeah, so I got the mentor gel, like silicone implants. I don't really know like if there's anything else to that high profile. I got 400 cc's in my left. No, 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 no. I got 400 in my right, 400 cc's in my right, 375 in my left. Um, I think I already mentioned this in this video somewhere, but last year I had a benign lump removed from my right breast, so it was smaller, like... When we're, talking, when we're saying smaller, it was non-existent. Um, and so, yeah, so they wanted to put more in that one to kind of, like, even it out. Kind of think it's still going to be smaller, but that's okay. Like, literally, nobody's born with the same size of anything. Like, I mean, my eyes are, like, different sizes. So, like, it's just, like, even more natural, I guess. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, yeah, so I think that that's why. I, oh, high profile also. So my bandwidth, no, I think it's called my breast width di diameter BWD um, is 11.5. So I'm petite. As I say, like I literally have always just gone through life thinking like I'm just like averagely like I'm not petite. I'm like just like a smaller framed but like average on that. Um, but they're like, no, that's pretty small. You're average. They do a few measurements and one of them, I don't really know where they measure from, but it's like three measurements and I was 20, 20, 20 and apparently like obviously that's sym symmetrical. So I was like, girl, I'm symmetrical. I don't know if this all kind of mess it up and I'm not going to be symmetrical, but that made me feel kind of cool. Like, cool. Um, but yeah, going back to that. So BWD is what's going to, so it's like your breast width diameter. So it's like my cat might, my cat might knock the camera over or yeah, I just moved. That's because my cat is, and I can't pick him up because he's like 13 pounds. Um, no, oh good. This is great. I'm going to have to cut this out of the video. Cookie, could you please move? Mom is trying to do a video. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, what was I saying? Breast with diameter. So that kind of like shows like your, I'm honestly not too sure, but I think it's like kind of like your width like around, but only like halfway. 
I don't really know. Um, but that is going to help determine the profile. So like smaller, you're going to want high profile, I guess. So um, it's not, I think it's like the wideness, the width of the um, implant. You know, honestly, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. So do your research on this. But I think it's the width, like kind of like the width, how much it project, projects outwards, which obviously if it's like higher, it's going to be like smaller in width or bigger. It's going to be like, like moderate. It's going to be like a little wider. So since I'm smaller, they were like, let's do high profile. Like they didn't even question it. They're like high profile. Um, and I went with their recommendations. Like I did, I tried on sizers. The sizers that they had me try on were, um, kind of like shaped the way that the, the implant's going to actually fit in. Cause I've read in so many groups that like, Oh, I tried them on and I wish I went with bigger or something like that. Or some surgeons just recommend like, okay, well let's go with bigger cause these sizers are a little misleading and we always need to go up like 25 cc's or whatever. Um, so they use like the proper um, sizers they said. So it should be like exactly what I'd seen. I'm gonna put you guys back down, my arms getting tired. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, and I think I talked about the console, right? Did I? I, I don't know. Um, I'll just talk about it now too. So. I ended up scheduling my consult and the surgery at the same time because I'm going on a, so Andrew and I, his work takes us to Cancun in December and I scheduled this surgery in August, the very end of August. So it was like almost the beginning of September. Um, so almost like just over a month away from the consultation. Um, and since the consultation was like, I couldn't get one sooner. I was like, well, when am I gonna be able to schedule surgery? Cause if I'm gonna get this done kind of like in winter time, I want to be able to have them for Cancun. Like, I mean, if I'm gonna get them done soon, like let's just do it for the next vacation, right? Um, so I had it where it's basically like two months away from Cancun. So like almost like just shy of eight weeks. Um, so I should be recovered and all good. I mean, I'm definitely going to be like recovered. I'm just hoping that like everything drops into place the way I want it to and everything looks good and feels good. Um, because I've seen some people, it takes longer to drop when you're smaller, AKA me, when you work out, AKA me, um, when your chest muscles might be sh tight cause you work out cause of that. Uh, me. So I was like, hopefully everything just drops. I'm going to start using a band next week. So maybe I'll include that in this video. Um, cause I think it's kind of short already. So I'm going to start using a band so I can kind of show you guys what that is. That's going to like push them down. I have my follow-up. Okay. I'm like going all over the place. I have my follow-up on Monday. Let's get back to the consultation. Um, oh yeah. So I scheduled my Oh my gosh, I think I have like ADD. I scheduled my um, surgery and consultation at the same time. And in order to lock in that surgery date, I did have to put down $500 deposit at that time. Like before I even like, I talked to the girl on the phone and she was like super kind, super good, like made a really good first impression. Um, and I there's like two... So I went into this looking at ideal implants, right? So there were only two surgery centers kind of like within my comfort zone of driving um, in the area to that did ideal implants. So if I wasn't looking at ideal implants, I might've actually found a different surgeon um, cause there's way more in the area. But this surgeon was literally like, I used to go to a doctor in that same complex. So I'm very familiar with the area. Like it's like down the street from the mall I go to. Um, it's like 10, 15 minutes away from home. So that's nice. And they did the surgeries in center. I think I said that on surgery day. So they do the surgeries where you like go for everything. So you don't have to like go to a different hospital. Um, that makes it cheaper too, cause it's all in house for them. So it was $1,000 cheaper than the other place I was looking. Um, cause they did their surgeries out of house. And then also, um, this place does a lot of breast augmentation. So they get like the implants at a discount for buying so much in bulk. Um, so that helps as well. So I went in and I was like, said, she said, she's like, oh, you're interested in ideal implants. Let's get that. And I was like, actually, I'm curious on all things, um, silicone or ideal. Definitely not saline. Cause those are like 
very I had little breast tissue before so very like you could see the rippling sometimes um, and just not as natural feeling not as natural looking like definitely if I'm gonna be spending money on this I am not going to be doing something that's like doesn't like make me feel great so um, I ended up like Andrew and I both ended up feeling like the ideal implant versus the gel um, silicone the mentor and um, I was still kind of like torn between them. Andrew was like, oh my gosh, the the like silicone feels a lot better. Um, and the silicone was cheaper as well. So with Andrew saying like, oh, I like the feel of that one better. And I, I felt it as well. And kind of like learning more about like the whole process of them. And I've just heard so many more women go with like the mentor than ideal and ideal is still pretty new so I was kind of like concerned about that you know I think that they've only been around for about 10 years now so I was kind of like oh, I'll just go with something that's like I mean it's safe it makes me feel safer now that they improve their technologies with like the gummy bear um so yeah so I went with that it was I think like somewhere around like $700 cheaper um so the price originally quoted at um, $69.50. The other place I was going to go to was $8,000. Um, but yeah, this place was $69.50. But since I did the silicone, I think it came out to, it's confusing because I did the $500 deposit, um, but I think it came out to $62.50. So yeah, so that's $700, right? I'm pretty sure that's $700. No, nope, I think that is. It might be $800. Um, anyways, um, <laughs> quick math is not my strong suit. Um, so yeah, so definitely be prepared to spend money when you're doing this. Um, and I did not use any financing options. I had the, um, like money in hand. Uh, I don't keep that much in my actual bank account. I keep it in like investments. So I had to pull it from my investments like a week before because it takes a little bit of time to transfer. Um, but yeah, so that was that. And then... Um, and Andrew did actually also help pay some of that too. So, um, investment for both of us. Um, but yeah, and I think that that's it. Then also, so I had my consult with the pre-op just because it was like already less than two weeks away from the surgery. I think it was like, I had my consult on Thursday and then I had a week and then it was just the next Monday. So it was like a week and like three days away. Um... So I like stop had to stop taking a bunch of like vitamins and stuff. I mean, I don't really take my vitamins as as much as I should, but magnesium I had to stop any melatonin, so I had no sleep aids, which actually it wasn't too bad. Um it really wasn't. Uh and then I did have to stop taking pre-workout 2 weeks before, which I I was aware of, so I stopped taking that, which is hard cuz coffee's just not as good for me before I work out. Um, and then the night before, the night before in the morning of surgery, have to rinse with, um, Hibiclens, so it's like an antibacterial soap, and yeah, so that was like all that. In the pre-op, they basically just like went over all the pre and post, um, like surgery procedures and stuff, went over my medications, told me to like... Um, or, the, I mean, I guess they put the order in, told me to pick them up, like, as soon as they're ready, basically, like, within the day or two, so that I make sure that there's no, like, errors. They give me all my medications, because sometimes they only give you, like, two of them, and you need three. Um, in the end, you know, I didn't take my pain meds, really, um, and I knew I wouldn't take that many. I knew that that would be, like, the first thing I stop, just because I'm never huge on, like, taking pain meds, narcotics, stuff like that. Um... I only have one more antibiotic to take, so I started taking that the day after surgery. So I started taking that Tuesday morning. Um, so they gave me Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So they gave me five days of antibiotic. Um, and yeah, I did take a muscle relaxer last night because I struggled to get to sleep the night before. I still struggled last night, but I, I could actually, I felt like I was a little more like, I think it helps my whole body when I take the muscle relaxer, I don't think it's the way the p pillows are positioned. I think that my muscles are just more like relaxed when I'm getting to sleep, which helps. Um, but yeah, pain is definitely minimal. I feel it sometimes. Um, P 
people say that it feels like pressure and bricks on your... I've never honestly felt like a lot of pressure. When I woke up, I was like, oh my gosh, wait, I don't feel anything. Um, it was so weird because I like expected to feel like... They, they, they said like you're going to feel like an elephant on you. Um, I did not. So I do feel like... I feel them there. 100% I do. But... um. I guess it's like, I just, I, I guess I just prepare myself mentally for everything. Watch tons of YouTube videos, which you're probably doing since you're watching this one. Because um, you have to be prepared for the Frank and boob. I don't know if I mentioned that, but like they're definitely high and square right now. Um, they don't look great, but I'm not like, I've watched some videos where the like, girls are like crying over it. And they're like, I knew this was going to happen, but it still like hurts my feelings that I don't look amazing two days post-op. And I'm like, whoa, relax calm down y'all um like you have to prepare yourself for stuff like that you just have to go into it knowing that these things are going to happen it's all gonna settle and it's all gonna be okay the stress honestly the stress of like worrying is probably making your recovery slower because that's increasing your cortisol levels and i'm sure that that's not great for your recovery your cortisol is probably already through the roof from just having surgery from all the antibiotics they're putting in you and the anesthesia oh my goodness, um, and the stress going into surgery, like, I can't imagine. So just adding to that with, like, stressing out about your results when you knew it was going to happen, not a good thing. So I definitely went into this, like, ready, like, for the Franken boob. I went into it, like, expecting pain. I went into it, like, thinking I would spend, like, a week on the couch. I was up by Thursday, back working, so that's great. Um, yeah, so... I did, I, I think it went all right. Um, and then another thing I did want to note too is, and I said this to Andrew on like Wednesday, I was like, you know what's funny? I watched a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of the girls, I mean, a lot of them are like in fitness, but like so am I. But I, I'm very at peace with my like body image, um, fluctuations, like, I'm very comfortable with stuff like that, like, in the off, my first off season, man, I got so, like, like, I got, like, fluffy, um, and I still loved it, so, you know, like, you just have to, you have to go into things with, like, an open mind, and you have to really be at peace with, like, your body image, I feel like, sometimes when you're doing things like this, um, but they would be, like, oh my gosh, I'm so bloated, like, and that's why some people would be crying over that too, and I'm like, oh my gosh, calm down, guys. Um, antibiotics and the anesthesia, it's all going to make you bloat, and they're, like, even saying, I know it's the antibiotics, this and that, but oh my gosh, I'm like, calm down, calm down. Um, definitely nothing to cry over. It's going to be okay. I didn't even notice it because I was, like, so concerned with everything else going on and, like, my, like, inability to do certain things, and then by the time, like, Wednesday or Thursday, I was like, oh, I can't, I, do I have some blow? Maybe, um, but, like, I don't really care, like, nobody's seeing me right now, I'm not really, like, in a bathing suit, because I'm, I'm recovering, um, so, yeah, so that's another thing to just kind of be mindful of, and just go in, like, knowing things like that are gonna happen, so that you're prepared for it, you know, um, also, a lot of people on, like, Facebook groups, said that they got emotional after I did not um which I don't know what makes you emotional the anesthesia or the meds or what it might be but like I did not get emotional I was like thinking that I'd be like crying because I heard that and I'm a very emotional person but nope like some people would be like I started crying because like somebody ate my soup or something I was like oh my gosh <laughs> like that's so that's so funny but like poor girl, you know? Um, but yeah, did not happen to me. Um, just like normal emotions, I feel like. Um, so yeah, I think that recovery has been harder and easier than I thought it would be. Like I went into it, like thinking it would be really hard. I feel like in the moment day, the post, the first day post-op, um, was like super hard, but like thinking back, like it was okay. Um, like, I was able to, like, do things on my own. Super grateful that Andrew did come home that day because I just, like, felt a little, like, uncomfortable, like, being, like, more on my own. And now I'm super fun being on my own. I can't wait for next week to see how I'm feeling and the week after that and then eight weeks when we're in Mexico. Cannot wait. 
All right, what is going on? So today I am a one week post op. I had my post, my one week post op appointment this morning. Everything looks good. They gave me my band. So um, it literally, like I explained it to Andrew, it looks like a workout band, um, like the ones that you put around, and it's even stretchy like one. The ones that you put around your um, like legs and stuff, like the circle ones. Um, and obviously it's not like connected like a workout band. You can Velcro it in. She said tight, but tight, but not uncomfortable. So I think it's supposed to be like a little bit uncomfortable, but like not painful, I guess. Um, so yeah, so I have that. So I'm going to start doing this in another week. So two weeks post op. Um, and that's just going to help them like draw up more. Um, I think she said like usually for like a few weeks, three to six, I want to say. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to do that starting next week. I'm not looking forward to it. She said, try not to wear a bra with it. Um, but if you do put it over the bra, um, my surgeon did recommend like not wearing a bra. I have been wearing one. I'll take it off like at night. I might start like trying to take it off while I'm at the house. Um, obviously when I leave, I'm going to put it on. Um, but yeah, so there's that. And then everything else looked good. We went over scar therapy too. So um, they sell like a gel and like a silicone strip to um, for scar therapy. So it was like $50 around, um, which isn't bad for three months. But I was like, I'll just see. I'm in like that Facebook group. So I'm going to see what other ladies are using because um, I know that I know that you can find stuff cheaper on Amazon, so I'm going to see if it's, like, as good. Um, I checked out some Amazon things, and I'm just going to see what Andrew thinks I should do, um, if I should just get theirs or use Amazon's. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'll let you guys know. I'll, like, update that. I'll put some links below. I'll link the Facebook group that I'm in. Like, I'm in two, but I love one of them. It's called Bus Mob. They also have a podcast, um, so you can look into that. Highly recommend that. Um, I was binging it for, like um, the few weeks before surgery that I found them, um, and the Facebook group is, like, so supportive, like, literally, there was a question about, like, the vaccine, like, the COVID vaccine, um, and it did not get, like, political or, like, and no argument started at all, like, I was like, whoa, how is this, like, how is this a place that we're living in, and, like, nobody's arguing over this, this is amazing, um, so highly recommend that Facebook group if you want supportive ladies, um, yeah, so band that and then I also realized I did not go over surgery day the other day when I was going over my consultation and everything. So surgery day, can't eat past midnight. Um, and they said you can't eat past midnight regardless of the time. I think I already mentioned this. Um, so originally I was supposed to go in at 3.30, have surgery at 4.30 p.m. That's like 16 hours without water or drink. Um, but they moved me up to go in at 10.30 and then um, surgery at 11.30, so that was so much better to water fast and food fast for, their, for like, not as long. Um, like, that was, like, normal almost for me, like, some days, especially now. Um, but yeah, so that was fine. On surgery, they, um, like, asked a few questions. Um, obviously, like, I got undressed. I did keep my pants on, so I wore, like, you saw my, like, comfy, like, um, Halloween pajama pants. You definitely want something loose. You don't want to wear, like, tennis shoes or anything hard to get on like I wore slip-ons um they give you your little like surgery surgery socks um and then uh they ask questions and stuff then she started putting the IV in I told you guys I passed out when they put the IV in I'm terrible with needles like if, you, if you're fine with needles like most people probably don't pass out I'm just terrible with needles so I passed out um which then I was like super nauseous after I passed out because like usually when you pass out you can have some something sugar to like kind of like get you normalized but I couldn't because I had to fast they even offered like do you want like a small sip of water and I was like no I don't want to risk anything like I'm super nervous about like the anesthesia like I don't want to mess anything up um then the anesthesiologist came in asked more questions um and yeah also, fun fact, um, she was not familiar with the fertility awareness method, so I got to school her and she was like older, so it was fun. I was like, yeah, it's a natural method. You take your temperature, you do this, and the app figures it all out. So yeah, that was fun. Um, flexing on that, I know that information and she didn't, so that's cool. Um, then the surgeon came in and marked me up and 
Um, we took pictures, then marked me up, took more pictures after he marked me up. I was feeling like faint while he was doing that and I had to stand. So I was like, can I sit down by any chance? Like I'm feeling a little faint um, and nauseous. And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll figure it out. Um, and he goes, it's just hard for you because you don't have any creases you know, like under boob. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm here. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was that. And then, um, and then they walked me. So when I had surgery last year to remove the benign lump, they like, they wheeled me in. Once I was on the table, like they were putting my no, I like had my IV drip and stuff like the hydration, I think and stuff like that. Um, but they wheeled me into the operating room. Here I walked, so I put my stuff in a little cab cu cubby. Um, and then, like, me thinking, like, oh, I'm going to get this after. Like, no, Amanda, you're freaking out of it. You're not the one getting your stuff after. They get it for you. Because um, I, like, put on two levels, and I was like, I hope I don't forget this. Um, I wasn't forgetting anything. <laughs> I was out of it. Um, so then I laid down. No, I took my gown off. They put like a warm towel or a warm blanket over me. It was so freaking cold in there. Um, like I, I, well, I was nervous and cold and like, I was like shivering cause like both things like at once. And then they're like, they put like another IV in me. I don't really know what happened with the first one. Maybe when I passed out, like she like just had to like stop and like it got messed up or something. Um, so they put uh, another one in me and they were all talking to me and somebody went to the same culinary school as me, the anesthesiologist, so it was kind of fun. We were talking about food, desserts, um, and I was like all so nervous. And then, like I said, when I did say, like we were talking about like him proposing to me, um, we were because I was saying like, they asked how long we'd been together and like apparently the anesthesiologist always like, kind of like jokes like, you know, oh, it's a bad time, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, I know, girl, like, I have been hinting that daily. Um, totally off topic, but that's okay. Um, so, yeah, so it was fun. It was, they definitely, like, made it, like, an easing process, which, I mean, I feel like you have to do when you're, like, about to put somebody under for surgery. Like, I feel like they're always really good at that. Um, like, last year's surgery went really well. They're, they're always, like, they're pros at, like, getting your, like, nerves kind of down. And then they start putting the feel-good stuff in you, and then you just go to sleep. Like, I don't even remember what happened. I wonder if they were, I think they talked to you until, like, you're done. And they're like, all right, guys, stop talking to her. Let's, let's stop. She says she's out of it. Um, and then I slightly remember, like, when I woke up, I slightly remember her, like, asking if I wanted to keep the socks, and she meant the surgical socks. I thought she meant, do you want to keep your socks? And I was like, yeah, yeah. I, I was probably, like, aggressive about it, because I kind of think she laughed at me. Um, I was probably like, yeah, of course I do. Um, and I remember waking up, and they said you'd feel like an elephant. I think I already said this. They'd feel that you'd feel like so much pressure, like an elephant sitting on you. I felt absolutely no pressure. I was like, oh, this is nice. I, like, feel nothing. Like, no pain, no, like, I mean, I felt they were there, but I didn't feel, like, any pressure at all. Like, it was great. Like I said, the pain was a two. Um, when I sat down, it was minimal still. Honestly, the back pain was probably worse than anything. When you moved around, especially getting up, oh my gosh, it was so hard. Like, Andrew, I recommend having, like, somebody that's going to be able to, like, kind of lift you up because it's hard. Like, even when I'm sleep, I'm, like, sitting, like, elevated, it's hard to just get up um, the first day or two. Like, day of surgery, 100%. I mean, you're wobbly as crap. Like, you need help going to the bathroom. You should not be walking by yourself. Um, the second day, I could walk by myself, but getting up was a struggle. I did do it myself a few times, but it was definitely, it was painful. Um, keep in mind, I was not taking the pain meds though, because I was not eating, so I couldn't. Um, literally only took one narco the whole time. And yeah, so that was basically everything with surgery. So I think I covered that. The last thing I did want to cover in this video is why I got them done. Um, I didn't know I don't nobody needs a answer for, from like why I got them done because it's my body, my choice. But, um, I did want to kind of go through this because, um, I know that people, people might not understand, right? So, you know, I was super flat chested, even more so on my right because I had the lump removed. There was literally nothing there. They asked me my bra size. I had no idea because I literally wore sports bras all the time. I was like, I don't know, a small, <laughs> um, cause I, bra shopping is just not a thing that you do when you have nothing there. Like I just wear sports bras. Um, 
And yeah, that's basically it. Um, they measured me. I was a double A, which I was like, well, I kind of figured I wasn't an A cup because that's what I usually buy and I, I don't fit. Because um, I don't honestly think, like, does Victoria's Secret actually sell double A? I don't think so. Um, but, so yeah, so I had nothing there, right? So this is why I got them. Um, clothes just don't fit properly, right? Like, Andrew and I would go to the mall and he would be, like, buying all the clothes. Like, it's almost like he's the girl. And, like, I'm, like, I don't like anything. Nothing fits. Like, nothing fits right. I would go to the, the changing room and, like, nothing fit right. It was so frustrating. Um, and I used to wear more, like, padded bras when I was, like, high school, college. Like, I used to do that. But now I'm, like, I'm not, yeah, I'm not even going to pretend. I'm, like, I'm not even going to fake it. I'm too old for that. You know, like, obviously I'm not too old for that. But, um, like, you know, like obviously when I'm wearing sports bras you can tell I have nothing so why pretend when I like get dressed up even though I guess clothes kind of do fit better then um but yeah nothing fit it was super frustrating and it is annoying like not being able like you have such limited amounts of clothes that you can wear because like like I said, nothing fits, and it's so annoying. Um, and then I also just wanted to look a little more feminine. Um, you know, like, women have boobs. I didn't, so I wanted to look... I mean, guy, literally, men have bigger boobs than me. I'm not even just talking about, like, the the fat boobs, but, like, just even muscular men. Like, they're bigger than mine. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So that's kind of why I got them done. Um, I love my body. I loved my body before. I love my body now. I always love my body. Um, I love my body when I'm down and wait for a competition. I love it when I'm fluffy AF, um, when I'm like in um, like a surplus, when I'm in off season bulking. Like, I, I learned to love my body. So, like, I love it. Um, so, that wasn't anything. Like, I feel like you should not get boobs if you are like a breast augmentation if you're just trying to like oh I don't love my body I need boobs I'm gonna love it then like I've seen posts on there people are like I thought I'd love it then but I still don't I think I just need to lose my this much weight or x or whatever um no it's all in your head you actually have to work through the head like the mental stuff first you should not go into anything saying like this is going to make me love myself that's not the case. You have to work through that mentally. Um, so I know that like being, that was something that held me back so much too, was being somebody who's so like, I love my body. Like I'm so at peace in myself. Like I'm confident this and that. And then saying, I'm going to get a breast augmentation. I was like, people are probably going to be like, she's a fraud. She doesn't actually love herself, blah, blah, blah. Um, but at the end of the day, I made a pact with myself after like, making so many decisions based on what I thought other people would think of me. I said, I'm never going to do that again. I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care what people think. If they don't agree with it, then they don't have to like me because that's who I am. I made that choice, right? Um, so I kind of I kind of was like overcoming one thing by saying something else like I previously like, you know, struggled with too. So yeah, so that's all of that. Um, and that's why I got them. I honestly, how long have I been thinking about it? People always ask that and I'm like, low-key I guess I was kind of like contemplating it for a while like it sounds so bad but like last year when I had the benign lump I was like well if I have cancer at least I'm gonna get new like new boobs you know um and that's like that's terrible to say like you should not kind of almost like almost wish you have it so you can get something else um so that's kind of like a newsflash there um and then Andrew just kind of one day was like we can always go to a consultation and just see what it's about and then that's when like I almost needed a permission slip right so also if you guys like are like contemplating doing anything in life whether it is like getting plastic surgery whether it's like just like starting your fitness journey investing in a coach starting your own business like whatever it is like this is your permission slip to do it like as long as it's not going to be harmful for you or anybody else um then do it especially if it's something that's going to make you happier like you have my permission to do it. If you need to message me, um, you can you can seriously like message me, email me, whatever it is. Say, hey, I was thinking about doing this. Do you, can you give me my permission slip, girl? I'm going to give you your permission slip. So, um, so yeah. So that's one other thing because like I feel like never in life have I needed somebody to tell me it's okay to do something. We're kind of just like hand off that like 
you know, they're going to say it before I, like, I don't know if that makes sense, like a permission slip. I've never felt that way before, but now I relate to it because I know some people do need permission slips to just like even start working with me as a coach. Um, so yeah, so you have a permission slip, do you, boo? Um, cause yeah, it kind of is heartbreaking that like, if it wasn't for Andrew, like, I still wouldn't have gotten this done. I mean, I would have been fine, but like, I probably would have thought about it and thought about it and thought about it, but like always told myself, I can't do it. Like, who am I? I'm not like a celebrity. I'm not in Hollywood. Like, I'm just a girl. I don't deserve it almost. Um, so yeah. So that's my two cents there. This video is probably really long now. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, leave a comment. I'm, I'm open to answer your questions. Um, obviously appropriate. I'm assuming that if you made it this far in the video, like you are a female interested in getting a breast augmentation or at least you just wanted to hear my, my journey through this. Um, so feel free to leave a comment. So happy to talk to you guys and you can always like message me too, like on Instagram. Um, I love, I love talking to people. So you feel free to message me. Um, I'm open to answer any questions and I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Do not forget to give it a thumbs up because that um, helps my ego and helps my channel. channel. So thank you guys and I'll see you guys next time.